Well, we all have a bunch of little drawers, don't we? With all kinds of things in them. So um, I was asked by a friend who knew somebody whose husband had died. And I was asked to go take a look at the um, estate and help them with uh, his stuff. And he was an analog design engineer, um, quite a good one too. Uh, I published a couple of times. And anyway, um, he had a back bedroom in the house where he did his electronics. And um, I went and sorted things out. I sort of separated the good stuff from the bad stuff. And I gave the widow permission to throw away <laughs> the stuff, right? She, she wanted to make sure that it was okay to throw away. And he had told her before he died, just throw the stuff away. And um, so I went in and uh, was able to save some of the stuff that I thought was worth saving. And then, like I said, gave her permission to, uh, to throw the rest away. So uh, today we'll be looking at this. Um, and this is his collection of analog and some digital stuff, but mostly analog uh, ICs and things. So he had four of these um, drawers. One drawer was capacitors, one drawer was resistors, and uh, one drawer was this, and one drawer was, oh, uh, nuts and bolts, little uh, uh, screws and, and washers and stuff like that. So. Um, uh, what I told her I would do was to take these home and I would uh, take his little boxes and would empty them into my little boxes <laughs> and, uh, and uh, give them a new home. So uh, this one is the jewel though. I've already separated the other ones out, um, but this one is the jewel. And uh, I don't think I will be separating this and putting it into my collection. I think this, this is a collection that needs to stand on its own. And I think it's a treasure trove of things that we can look at through the, uh, through the channel. Um, yeah, some differential amplifiers, uh, optocouplers, uh, RF, something or others, photodial. Anyway, let, let's, let's go through these and uh, see if anything uh, sparks interest in people. Uh, I'm always up for ideas for videos and stuff. Oh, here's some... 7404s, wow. <laughs> okay, let's take a look. Okay, well the first one is labeled uh, voltage references. And right away we see these things. We know what these are, right? These are probably 399s? Three, three, uh, three, three nine three, yeah, 399s. Yeah, three nine these are L, LM339. So he's got a bunch of those, so nice. Um, so people know, don't know what these are. These are tiny, kind of uh, temperature controlled uh, uh, voltage standards, um, and uh, I need to do a, vol a, a video on voltage standards. There, there is no absolute standard you can buy. There are only relative standards, and you need to calibrate them, and there's a reason for that, and uh, one that I don't really good, have a good answer for, why there's not an absolute standard that you can have in your garage, but you can't. Um, so there's a LM317s, there's a LT1019, an AD588, that one sounds familiar. Anyway, uh, and then a bunch of regulars here in the back, a nice big 5 amp jobs, uh, LM338, uh, a bunch of regular 7905s, um, and some nice I think these are low dropout ones, 2925s. Here's a 5 volt low dropout, I believe. 3966. Anyway, a whole bunch of really, really cool stuff that's very, very usable. So yeah, all this stuff will find a will find a really good home. And here is an inductor. So I'll take him out of there. <laughs> what is this little guy? He's cute. He's very, very cute. Anyway. Like I said, this guy was definitely an analog designer. His passion was um, audio. So in his uh, retirement days, he um, uh, repaired old tube radios. He had cases and cases of tubes. Um, those are hard to get rid of. Um, 
and um, he liked uh, audio amplifiers and stuff. So working on old tube amplifiers uh, in his living room, he had a real nice Macintosh setup and stuff that his uh, that his wife cherishes. Anyway, so yeah, there we go. We'll have uh, have some fun with the regulators. Um, voltage confer converters, I think. These are probably DC to DC converters, max 680. These are all max 680s. Uh, 60, 7660, that sounds like a switcher. Yeah, so those are fun. Oh, there's another little inductor. Let's move that up. Uh, miscellaneous, NPN. Okay, lots of those. Lots of those. Uh, another one with PNPs. Uh, it has a ton of two, two and four, 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 oh, 4403s? Not familiar with that one. Hmm. Tip 122. Uh, here's some, oh no, this was. Some of these drawers are packed so full I can't get them out of the big box. There we go. This one's all mashed in there. This one is labeled MOSFETs. Uh, this looks like JFETs, 5457s. I think I have a, I think I have a place for those. I'll put this one on the side. I have a little box of JFETs. Um, yep, yep. Another JFET. So he probably, I could have asked him how you, how you do JFET stuff. Like I said, it's something that's a bit magical. All right. Um, ah, here we go. Here's something that I think we've had on the channel. It says tone decoder and phase lock loops. Really? Uh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe just the, uh, Oh, yeah, LM567, yay. Told you guys about those. <laughs> All right, this one has a A to Ds. Ah, there's some Zener diodes. So he had put Zener diodes all over the place in these boxes, so it doesn't have room for them. But I collected them and put them in a different place. He had a lot of Zener diodes, a lot of Zener diodes. A to D, interesting. All right. So some strange things in there. Uh, optocouplers. Now I don't know why, but a lot of optocouplers are white. Never have quite figured that one out. Why not? Why not black? But they uh, they are white. Dax. Oh, this one's jammed in. I can't get it out of the box. Too jammed in. Oh, come on. You can come out. Come on. Oh man. I'm telling you, this one's really jammed in there. There we go. This one's labeled uh, end channel MOSFET, so these are funny little guys. I like those. Uh, I've got a bunch of end channel MOSFETs myself. All right, put this back in. Current sources, Some more zeners. Uh, oh, a whole bunch of zeners in there. Let's get those zeners up. Like I said, he's got a ton of zeners. I don't know what he needed so many zeners for, but he used them all over the place. He had tons of them. All right. Current sources, what kind of current source are these? Burr Brown. I need a magnifying glass. Oh, these are rough 200s. I think I had those in a video. Okay. This one 
one's labeled filters and Hall effect sensors. So. All right, more zeners. I tell you, the guy had zeners everywhere. If you're in the market for a uh, oscilloscope, his uh, personal oscilloscope ended up at Anchor Electronics. So if you're ever at Anchor and you see a LaCroix oscilloscope, it came out of this estate. Uh, uh, miscellaneous in there. Voltage to frequency converters. Ah, that would be a good, uh, a good uh, video. And voltage to frequency and frequency to voltage, voltage converters. That would be a great one. Here's some Burr Brown parts. And uh, here's some, I don't know what these are, MPS A14s, I don't know. So hopefully those are what I think they're. Instrumentation amplifiers. Uh, there's some Burr Brown parts here. Uh, what are these? Yep, Burr Brown, excellent. So. We'll have to do a good, I have a project in mind for a uh, instrumentation amplifier. These look like some A to D's or D to A's. This says, diff, oh, diff amplifier. This might be real high. ISO 100, might be real expensive for a brown part. Quad op amps. Um, LM6134 is not familiar with that. Anyway, a lot of, oops, there's some more zeners. Oh, those are, those are actually in here. Yeah, another Burr Brown part, an, an OPA4277. I think we saw those. dual op amps and a little reference board. A lot of times uh, manufacturers will um, sell you eval boards for their parts, or if you're big enough, they'll give them to you. Uh, universal high speed eval board. Eval the 80, 80 op amp, I don't know, something rather. Doesn't see what part number it used. Nice layout though, see, it'll have um, SMA connectors around there and a real fast layout and everything. So that, that'll be fun. Maybe we can build that up someday. Oh, we got uh, single op amps. I don't think there's any Japanese clones in there or Chinese clones in there. Uh, high speed op amps, OPA 621s. All right, not sure how fast those are. That's interesting. And then here's some more Generic uh, TTL stuff. So 7202s, 4009s. Here's some XORs. 7432 OR gates. There's some more zeners shoved in there. Get rid of those zeners. <laughs> oh man. OR gate, uh, 7407 hex buffers, JK flip-flops with lots and lots of diodes. You know, look at all the diodes in there. Well, all of this is a diodes except for two ICs. So we will rescue the ICs out of there. And I will dump the, dump the diodes out. Yeah, all right. 7404 inverters, RF, RC chips, huh, LM3520, I don't know. Hmm. Solar cells and photodiodes, okay. Uh, we have some sockets over there, nice. Some dual flip-flops over here, 7474s. Oh, these were 7409s, these are 7474s. 
Turn that out. There's some diodes in there. I'll dig through that later. Here's some miscellaneous diodes. There's some LEDs in the back. Oh, those are oldies. Yeah, those are real oldies. Wow. Uh, multiplexers. Somebody was asking about multiplexers. So maybe we can do a video on that. Multiplexers are just uh, analog switches, just uh, more in one package. With some common lines and stuff. Counters. Laser diodes. Laser diodes. Wow, why does he have those? I don't know what he worked on. I think he worked at Lockheed for a while and he worked someplace. I don't know where all he worked. But these are really old school laser diode things. Back when they were expensive. Now they're a dime a dozen. Uh, comparators. Oh, nice. LM311s. LM319s. I showed that in a video. DRAM. I can't get it. I can't get it open unless there's something in there. Oh well. Uh, multiplexers again. Oh, here we go. Analog switches. Let's see what analog switches he has. Here's 4066. And, uh, oh, HC 4066. Nice. I would have expected him to have some fancy ones too. Here's a max part. 39.4. Interesting. One shots. 123s. <laughs> I guess he, I guess he wanted a whole bunch of those, or somebody was throwing them out and he showed them in there. Nobody uses those things, I don't think, anymore. Back in the day they did. Uh, sample and holds. Ooh, fancy ones. The gold. Whoa, real fancy ones. Analog devices. 9100. Bet you those were pretty. A pretty penny. And uh, some 74HC221. Not familiar with that part. Stepper motor drivers. Oh, can we open it? Can we open it? No. Yeah, stepper motor driver chips. All right, relays. Audio amplifiers. So he was an audio guy, so this will be interesting to look in. Oh, here we go. Look at that. Black LEDs. <laughs> Those are cool. Probably IR. Noise canceling microphone. Oh, look at these. He's got a whole bunch of little speakers and microphones and stuff. And then what's the thing labeled? Audio amplifiers. Yeah, so 8279s. Here's a big apex part. Up to 8279s. So he must have, must have had some project in mind for those. Lots of 8279s. Wow. Okay. And at random, a whole bunch of microphones and stuff. I didn't know where to put them. Oh, there's the thing that's jammed in there. I'll take that one out. What is this? This is another little microphone. Okay. And then clocks and timers. Oh, okay. So we have, uh, oops, sorry, you guys. A whole bunch of uh, oscillators and stuff, as does everybody. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, lots and lots of goodness and uh, more parts than I'll use in a lifetime as they were more parts than he used in a lifetime. So anyway, thank you, Bill. Your stuff is in good hands.